Similarly, while ASEAN countries have leveraged digitalization to sustain economic activity and enable business continuity, such accelerated adoption of digital technology will also open up further growth opportunities and shore up resilience if they are sustainable over the long term. Please allow me to share the news that the German government has adopted its Indo-Pacific um, guidelines at the beginning of September. This is the first ever strategy or the first ever blueprint by a German government that focuses on the Indo-Pacific. The way forward for ASEAN to thrive and stay relevant in the rapidly changing world order is to stay united and resilient by strengthening the ASEAN centrality and unity. In the recovery process, opportunities will present for us to build back better. This is the way to be a safe and prosperous region and the beacon of hope for multilateralism in this trying time. ASEAN was very quick in coming up with some plans. Uh, one of that is, of course, the recovery fund that was then finalized and announced in the ASEAN summit. But in, as, as far as looking at, you know, enhancing and, and promoting greater uh, cooperation in health, uh, there are a lot of uh, initiatives being uh, discussed at the moment. COVID-19 has accelerated digitalization and also e-commerce. Okay, um, A lot of us now, like I said, work shop, play, all online. Okay, So there are some estimates by some of the consultants on how this market is going to grow rapidly over the coming years. Always remember that GSCs are dynamic creatures and they are always evolving. Um, reducing trade costs are critical to retaining and expanding GSCs in the ASEAN region. They play a very important role in uh, the development of countries within ASEAN. Also very important in one of our proposals that ASEAN makes decisions faster, that ASEAN does not keep pushing paper around uh, through the various processes, the various working groups that it has. It has to actually focus on decision making. As a strategic crossroads, Southeast Asia, indeed the Indo-Pacific as a whole, is a naturally multipolar region. Multipolarity enhances agency because it maximizes maneuver space. Southeast Asia is not and is very unlikely to be ever in a purely bipolar situation. Not all the poles will be of equal weight, but, where, but they do exist and whether we realize it or not, ASEAN created forums like the ARF, the EAS, the ADMM Plus do help promote the natural multipolarity of our region by providing additional supplementary platforms to anchor major powers in our region. The immediate challenge is that of economic recovery. Given the fact that the global economy will take time to recover, ASEAN must rely on generating growth from within by advancing our integration and dealing with the proliferation of non-tariff barriers. This will help to attract investment that are diversifying their supply chain into the region. The point that I wanted to say is, how can we as a region go beyond simply describing? How can we as a region simply go beyond describing and analyzing what are the obvious? How can we identify a certain roadmap, certain clear actions to respond and to anticipate these developments. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, if there is nothing you take away from the past three days, then it is this. To borrow a millennial slang, it's time for ASEAN to get woke. The time is now for ASEAN to take regionalism by its horns, put money where its mouth is, and be the driver for ASEAN integration. Advocate for an open multilateral agenda, show an example to the world by keeping trade flows open, supply chains moving, multilateral cooperation alive. And some of these um, concrete suggestions were made, such as to improve 
ASAC capabilities, um, not taking a passive stand, um, ASEAN must make institutional changes from within 